My name is Keith Edwards, and today we're going to talk about Gateway Load Balancing Protocol, or GLBP. We're going to talk about uh, a little bit about um, the review of the concept of how hosts use their default gateway in order for this discussion to make any sense in the first place. We're going to talk a little bit about HSRP and VRRP because the contrast between HSRP and VRRP, I think, is important. Then we'll talk about the GLBP operation, GLBP technicalities, and some very basic GLBP configuration commands. How do hosts use their default gateway? Well, when a host is set up for its IP stack, it is given the IP address of its default gateway, typically. Okay? They know the IP address of themselves and their subnet. Because they know their own IP address and subnet, they know the range of addresses which are on their own subnet. That means they know that everything else is not on their own subnet. So when a host is trying to talk to a host which is on its subnet, what it does is it tries to talk to it at layer 2 using a layer two header, which includes its own source MAC address and the destination MAC address of the person who he's trying to reach. If it does not know the destination MAC address of the device it's trying to reach, what it does is to use address resolution protocol. So it'll send an ARP message saying, who owns this IP address? That message would include his own source MAC address. The host which owns that IP address will respond with a message sourced from his own uh, MAC address to the MAC address of the host who sent the ARP request saying, I own that IP address. From that, the host who sent the original request learns the MAC address of the IP, uh, IP address host he was trying to reach and can populate his ARP table, thus correlating the MAC address to the IP address, and now formulate frames destined for that host with the destination MAC address of the host and the source MAC address of the host that is originating the messages. By the same token, if I'm sending, trying to get something off of my subnet, there still must be a layer two header. So I will do the same procedure in order to obtain the MAC address of my default gateway. And therefore, everything that I'm trying to send off of my sub subnet will have my own source MAC address and the destination MAC address of the default gateway. Well, HSRP is a Cisco proprietary router redundancy protocol, and VRRP stands for Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol. How do these work? Well, now, in the case of a host trying to send something off of its subnet, he still has to know the MAC address of his default gateway. But in a case of um, HSRP or VRRP, the MAC address that he learns when he ARPs is not a burned in address on the router. It is what's known as a virtual MAC address. So it would be the virtual MAC address assigned to the active router via the protocol, HSRP or VRP. Okay, so I ARP, I learn the VMAC. As a host, I don't know that it's a virtual MAC. I just know it's a MAC address and it's my default gateway's MAC address. Okay, in the case of HSRP and VERP, only one router is going to process data destined to that VMAC at a time. Therefore, even though I have two routers configured in a complementary fashion, only one of them is active as the default gateway at a time. What he would do is when he becomes active, he would send out a gratuitous ARP letting the switch environment know that the VMAC lives on him. So in this case, the router on the left would have told the switch that's in the center there that the host is plugged into, he would have sent an ARP request and then he would have responded to his own ARP request with his own MAC address. Thus, the CAM table or MAC address table of the switching environment learns that the VMAC is up the router on the left. Therefore, 
Once it is ARPed for, when the host tries to get something off of its subnet, it simply sends it to the VMAC, the switch knows where the VMAC lives, and out through the router on the left go any outbound messages off of the subnet. Okay? If anybody were trying to IP for, or, or ping for the IP address, the 172.16.6.1, that is the IP address of the default gateway, if somebody tried to ping it from the outside, that ping would also be handled by the router which is active. But the more important feature is the idea that all outbound traffic is being hand, handled by the active router by virtue of the fact that it owns the VMAC. There is redundancy involved in HSRP and VERP. The two routers will listen to each other. They will send uh, hellos to each other. If the active stops responding to hellos, the standby can take over. And he would assume control of the VMAC. Okay? He would assume control of the VMAC and then start processing outbound traffic. Only one router at a time is handling outbound traffic. The other one is a standby. We have redundancy. But only one router is handling outbound traffic. With GLBP, we do this differently. We still have the same concept of trying to get to your default gateway. But GLBP is architected differently. You'll notice instead of active and standby, what we have are these identifiers of AVG and AVF. AVF stands for Active Virtual Forwarder. And that means that any router that is an active virtual forwarder can actively forward traffic. Typically in a GLBP group, you only have one active virtual gateway, the AVG. So you see in this example, the router on the left is the AVG and he is an AVF. The AVG is responsible for answering ARP requests. So when hosts do an ARP to find out the MAC address of the default gateway, it is the AVG who responds. But in this case, he, he acts a little differently than in HSRP and VERP. Why? Because I have multiple devices acting as an active virtual forwarder and each of those devices has its own virtual MAC address. So we're not working with just one virtual MAC address, working with multiple virtual MAC addresses. So what the AVG will do is to alternate ARP requests to the multiple different VMACs. The hosts never know. The hosts do what they've always done. They ARP for the default gateway, they get a MAC address, and now anytime they want to send something off of their subnet, they send it to the MAC address that they received from the AVG as being the MAC address of their default gateway. They don't know that some of the hosts on their subnet are using one router and some are using another. Along with this ability to use multiple routers simultaneously, something we did not get with VERP and HSRP. This technology lets us have multiple routers simultaneously process traffic for the same subnet. That's the thing that we get, but we didn't take away redundancy. Just as in HSRP and VERP, we still have an automatic failover capability. So it, it has the things we got from HSRP and VERP plus the ability to have multiple routers active for the same subnet at the same time. So here's an illustration of that. In this particular case, I have four routers in the GLBP group. And we'll refer to them as routers one, two, three, four from left to right if I have to, okay? So the hosts still all have their IP configuration. They still know about their um, IP address and subnet, and they still know the IP address of their default gateway. And it's still presumably the same as we talked about before, the dot one for the uh, subnet, which was, was the example before. They still ARP for the default gateway. The difference is that with this technology, Whenever this device 
ARPs, all of the ARPs for the default gateway still go to the guy who is the AVG. Okay? So all of the ARPs still go to the same guy. But he just alternates his responses. So, for example, this response, when these guys ARP, this guy, when he ARPs, his ARP goes to there. But he gets the MAC address referring to this router. So now from now on, when he wants to go off of his subnet, he will put a layer two header on everything that's destined off of his subnet that goes to his VMAC. Whenever the next guy ARPs, he's given the VMAC of router three. So when he wants to talk off of the subnet, he's sending everything this way. And as you can imagine that I'm going to say, host for the, the host on the right, when he ARPs, he's going to be given the VMAC of the router that hasn't been chosen before, assuming we're using round robin load balancing. So he's going to wind up thinking that to get off of his subnet, he has to go to the VMAC that ends in 0104. So that's a simplistic example and of, of uh, GLBP. And what it means is we now have four routers actively processing outbound traffic. Now, what you've done north of those routers in order to make sure that those routers have sufficient bandwidth, etc., that's on you. But as far as GLBP is con concerned, you now have, in this example, four active virtual forwarders handling outbound traffic. Okay, so all four of them would be able to handle the outbound traffic. Now, a few technical notes to point out. Depending on the Cisco platform you're using, you can have four to six active virtual forwarders. In the Nexus line, if I recall correctly, you can have up to six active virtual forwarders simultaneously. The virtual MAC address format for GLBP it starts with 0007B4, and this is for the VMAC, okay? 0007B4. The next four hexadecimal characters refer to the group number. So GLBP group one, two, three, whatever. And the last two characters refer to which active virtual forwarder devices. And again, they are annotated hexadecimally. GLBP is Cisco proprietary. The failover technique in GLBP is rather clever. When an AVF fails, and of course they're sending keep alive, so the other AVFs know when somebody has failed. When an AVF fails, one of the remaining AVF, uh, AVFs takes control of that virtual MAC address. He would then send out a gratuitous ARP informing the layer two environment that that MAC address now lives up on that router. The hosts are undisturbed. The hosts do not have to learn a new default gateway address, right? They don't have to learn a new default gateway address. It has remained the same. The fact that it lives on a different platform, they don't know. They never find out, okay? When it comes to the three load balancing schemes, um, they are referred to as round robin, host dependent, and weighted. Round robin is just alternating based on the number of AVFs there are. Host dependent is the idea of, re it's kind of what we would call stickiness in other technologies. The idea of remembering which host was given which VMAC in, in the past. So it would start out acting uh, in a round robin fashion, but then it would like retain knowledge of which um, device had which had been given which VMAC. And finally, weighted, I can assign weights to my uh, settings in my routers to say don't give the uh, don't distribute the VMAX evenly. Maybe I have some routers that are more powerful than others. I can influence, as I said, based on that weighted, I can influence the load balancing, and I can also influence which device is chosen as the active virtual gateway. Okay, if I, again, if I have one router that's more powerful than the others, and I would prefer for it to be the active virtual gateway most of the time, or if the spanning tree configuration thinks in terms of optimizing one router versus another, then I can uh, have a hand in influencing 
which router is the active virtual gateway most of the time. Configuring GLBP, really pretty simple if you're not adding all of the uh, bells and whistles, shall we say. Um, this is a manual set of manual entries. You would notice that in the two devices, router A has a physical address of 172.16.5.2, and router B on the right has a physical address of 172.16.5.3. Same subnet mask in both cases. They are both on the same subnet, but they differ, have a different IP address per interface. However, the GLBP configuration on both of them is identical. GLBP group one with a default gateway address of 172.16.5.1. So they are the same GLBP group. They have the same um, IP address. That is the IP of the address of the default gateway. The VMAC is chosen based on the format I showed you a slide or two ago. You do not assign the VMAC. It's automatically cooked up. And there are many other different options that can be used in this technology, like you can decide, again, which guy is the active virtual gateway most of the time, how you're going to distribute. Um, you can also do interface tracking and various things like that. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this very basic, basic explanation of GLBP.